to Anything But Ordinary with your host, Spooky and Raven. Tonight we're talking about urban legends. Are they just tall tales? Or are they real events that happen to real people? I'm your host, Spooky. Hello, Raven. Oh, and here's your other host, Raven. Yes, that's me. <laughs> you keep throwing your me off. Your other awesome host, Raven. Every time you keep throwing me off, we come back and I keep doing different little intros. And I'm like, whoa, okay, new way. Woohoo. How are you? I'm doing good. How Great. are you doing? How's the weather up there? Uh, it's fine. Not uh, too it's cold, not too hot. Eh, uh, you're lucky. You're well, lucky. So, maybe. anyway, do you believe in urban legends? Do I believe in urban legends? Yeah. Um... As far as I know, I think urban legends are just that. Legends, they're not true. They're fictitious, like myths and whatever. But, I mean, they're cool to talk about, especially when you're younger and you guys are having, like, sleepovers when you're young or you go camping oh, yeah. and then you're around the campfire with your friends having a few drinks and then you yeah, just want to scare, scare the crap, the crap out of them. People. Yeah, yeah. oops, we shouldn't say the C word, but we did. We apologize. We but. did. We apologized to everybody. Right. <clears throat> But it's it's just and I apologize in van in advance because I know it's going to happen again. Um, I happen to think that a lot of stories have a grain of truth in them, but by the time they get retold and retold and retold over the years, right? Um, it just it 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 gets distorted and it gets to the point where it's not true anymore, you know, because everybody's going to embellish it a little bit to scare the pants off of somebody, right? Well, there's some of them, I mean, there's some stories I've gone on, you know, which some of them will probably throw it tonight where they were true and stuff. But I think that, like you said, things just grow and get bigger, but that's what makes them fun, you know, and especially yeah. around Halloween. Because we're just trying to do, like, fun Halloween-ish type shows for the next yeah, couple of October. shows. Yeah, Yeah, we gotta, we got to throw something good in. So we're just kind of keeping it light and just doing basic kind of things that people are doing around halloween right That's so true. we also have i just want to mention that we have a facebook page now yep, and it's anything sure but ordinary with spooky and raven you can type that in on facebook and while you're on that facebook page if you hit like you can also watch the show there from the you stream on it we, it uh, streams live on that our facebook page and we also have where it shows all of our podcasts on that page as well so if you miss something you can just go and See it there, too. Well, all on Facebook. Excellent. Except for if you want to chat, you got to come to our website. That's true. You can't chat on the on Facebook Ustream yep. or our Facebook page, Anything But Ordinary is Spooky and Raven. And the Facebook page is open to everybody that wants to go in, check it out, make Fair. a comment, listen yeah. to the show. It's, it's open to everyone. Um, myths and legends have been around since... The first humans sat around a campfire and spun tall tales of things that lurked in the dark. And come on, admit it. You know, I mean, you still get chills when you think about back on the urban legends when you were a kid. I mean, every kid has heard the story of the mask maniac, the killer with a hook for a hand, ghost, alien abductions, and so on. Bigfoot. And they all have to be true. I mean, because... They totally happen to a friend of a friend's best buddy's cousin's girlfriend. I mean, what more proof could you possibly need than that? I mean, you know, that woman wouldn't lie, would she? Maybe. It'd make, a, it'd make a believer out of me. It's always when you're drunk that you get the best stories, though. You know? Yeah, I know. And they always seem to get even creepier because, you know, when you're someone's drunk and they're doing the urban, uh, telling the stories around the backyard with your friends and stuff when it's winter fall getting cold not winter but some people it's winter and halloween <laughs> for us well, up in the midwest it sometimes happens i or, lived i lived in iowa for a while and i can remember two halloweens where we had a ginormous blizzard so they canceled trick-or-treating but yeah i mean when you're out camping you're sitting around that's the fire a horror story on its own being a kid and having Halloween canceled, that sucks. Yeah, that's not an urban legend either. I've seen that happen twice. <laughs> and, um, but, I mean, you know, when, when you're out camping, 
you got no you, you, you got no cell service your iPad don't work your Kindle whatever you got so what are you gonna do you're gonna sit around the campfire you're gonna tell stories and the scarier the story the better I mean you know when you go camping you're not supposed to sleep anyway unless you're a kid all unless kids should kid. sleep so I'm just saying but yeah I don't know, we kind of just zipped through a bunch of ones, you know, on the internet of all the different urban legends that they have out here and around the world, and we just kind of just picked a couple, whatever, and just going to run with it, but, I mean, there's so many out there, but there's always a few that have been around <coughs> forever. Well, we didn't want to go with the standard ones like Bloody Mary. I get so sick and tired of hearing of that one. Right. Uh, so we decided that we were going to choose a few that, eh, Maybe not so common. Maybe they are. Some of them are. Some of them are, yeah. It's hard not to have heard these. I mean, because the, I mean, at some point in your life, you've heard one or two of these at least. So. Oh yeah. And um, uh, let's see. I'll just throw one out randomly. But they say somewhere in Georgia, back in the 1800s, there was like this farmer and his wife, and they were expecting another child. Well, they already had like. A bunch of kids as as it is and back in the 1800s you know it's pretty hard to feed a large family let alone yourself back then you know it's not like you had grocery stores or what have you well the farmer knew that he and his wife could not provide for this new child because their crops had been bad all year and you know he can hardly even feed you know the family dog let alone all his kids you know so when the wife went into labor the farmer called for you know what do you call it? I don't, see, I don't, they weren't really doctors in town, but you know, the, the next best thing to the doctor, you know, the midwife, guy would, midwife or, you know, what well, back happened. Then, back then the neighbor wife helped deliver the kids. Right. So un, unknown to his wife, the farmer and the quote unquote doctor type person back then had already, you know, made pre-arrangements <laughs> to get rid of the baby. Well, their plan was to, you know, take the baby from the room immediately after delivery and basically just tell the wife that the baby died during birth. Well, when he, you know, the doctor left the farmhouse that night, he took the baby to a nearby bridge and dropped the baby into the water. Now, the wife never found out about what the farmer and the doctor had done, but it said that, you know, on cloudless nights during a full moon and you drive your car to the "Quote unquote baby bridge" because I think they have one almost in every county, in every state, because the story seems to be all over the place. And you park it in the center at the bridge's highest point, and you get out of your car and you sprinkle baby powder in a circle around it, and then get back in your car and turn on, you know, turn the engine and the lights off for ten minutes. You'll hear, you know, all these weird sounds, and then when you get out, supposedly you'll see like hands and footprints of a baby crawling around in the baby powder. Now. They always had this baby bridge, but it has different versions of the story of how either like a, a mother and her child, you know, she jumped off the bridge with her child, and then you'll see the mother looking for her baby on the bridge, or, you know, the baby crying for their mother on the bridge. All these people are having all these different experiences. So, I mean, that's one of the urban legends that always grows into different t type of stories, and, I mean, you can several anyway. variations of this same story right it just depends on how long the story's been told for one thing but every if you look it up or you go anywhere and you'll be hanging out and they're like oh we got to go to such and such bridge because there's the story of this baby or this lady who lost her life with her baby and you know it's always the same thing and it so there's really no one true spot where this or you know this story came from you don't even know where that story began no, but it seemed you know. to have spread everywhere. So obviously, every somebody at some point in every country, in every not every country, but every uh, state in small town seemed to jump off a bridge. Oh, and there's there, there's a bridge in every county in right. the country. Mm -hmm. But that's one I've always heard about. I mean, you always hear that, no matter where you're at. There's, someone always has that story to talk well, about. Well, in the first place, if I'm parked on a bridge, which I'm not going to do... <laughs> Okay. In the middle of the night, which I'm definitely not going to do, I mean, I would have to have car trouble. Okay. Some people park I, on bridges, though. I hear though, strange fishing, noises. I'm not going to get out of my car. I'm going to lock the doors and hope that whatever's out there stays out there. 
and uh, let alone get out and start sprinkling baby powder. Do you know how expensive that stuff is getting? Well, then use flour, I guess. I mean, I guess it's kids, so it's like they want to go and see, you know, if if this legend's true and if it really works. And, you know, so they grab whatever they got. You got powdered sugar, you have flour, or, you know, baby powder, whatever, anything that you can use that could, you know, it leave a print of what these things are. And people are always doing it everywhere. So it's just a common, you know, legend that everybody's always spoke about and tries out it, it, as a it, teenager it's a, <laughs> yeah it sounds like it's the common halloween legend that that would be something that you know on halloween night you're too old to go trick-or-treating so what are you gonna do hey let's go to the bridge get the buzz on go down to the bridge and yeah. try to stir up a ghost exactly oh you gotta have that buzz on or you're not gonna see a thing <laughs> or hear anything you gotta have that buzz on uh, we don't always promote drinking, but Spooky no, does, No, we do not promote drinking. Do not get me wrong. We do not promote drinking. That was just sarcasm. I think everybody's done. Yeah, but there was a ha- there's a, also that other one where they, they do where, you know, the kids push the car off the railroad track one, too. So it kind of goes with the same thing, the bridge I and the railroad I think that's kind track. of a variation of that. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? I don't uh, know. Um... Uh, the, the one where uh, uh, the car stalled on the railroad tracks and the train was coming and suddenly the car started rolling forward and when they got out and looked, there were handprints in the dirt on the car. Isn't that kind of a variation of the bridge one? Sort of, except for it was a bunch of kids that got killed on the railroad track by a bus or this or that. Yeah. And then they say if you park your car on the railroad track or park it in a situation where you could get hurt, all these ghost kids will come together and, and push you to safety. <coughs> Oh, yeah. What if you do that one time and then decide, you know what, we're going to just push him right back on the track? I mean, then... <laughs> oh, my. I wouldn't want to think about that. Instead, they get... That'd be our luck, right? Hey, let's try this That'd out. That'd be my Woo. luck. They push me right back on the track. Your car rolls all the way off, and then all of a sudden, right before the train comes, whoosh. Yep. There you go. Bam. I have one called Don't Answer the Phone. Oh, that's another popular one. Oh yeah and it goes late one night a babysitter was by herself downstairs after putting the kids to bed the phone rang and thinking it was the kids' parents checking on things she answered it and instead of uh, someone talking and identifying themselves all she heard was heavy breathing into the phone for a few moments and the babysitter just hung up the phone phone rang again she answered it and again she got heavy breathing but this time it was followed by a laugh so since she was alone in the house this scared her so she called the operator and asked the operator to be for the call to be traced now this is supposed to have happened like back in the 70s and back then they did do that the operators did that try to get one to do it now (laughs) well the phone rang a third time and it was the same breathing and laugh and the caller hung up and the operator came on immediately and told the girl the call came from inside the house so the girl ran out of the house while the operator called the police when the police arrived they discovered that a man had murdered the children and was waiting to murder the babysitter if she went upstairs now there are different variations of this tale and one of them was being called have you checked on the children but um something about this particular urban legend i don't know where it started but something similar to this actually did happen in alton illinois back in the i think it was late 60s or early 70s but anyway um I don't know about you, but if I'm babysitting in a big old house and I know the kids are in bed asleep and somebody calls up, I'm not going to answer that phone three times. You know what? I never, I don't, I've babysat before, but I never answered the other person's phone. I mean, that's their business, you know, so I guess I never answered it. They never even told me to answer or pick up the line. I guess you look and if it's not, it doesn't have the parent's cell phone number or whatever, then you don't bother picking up. It's not your place to pick up, but I guess this is an older urban legend, so that this is before caller ID and 
what have you. So right. Yeah, I don't know. It would just. I think I would have. Well, I can understand a babysitter answering the phone mm-hmm. because I mean, after all, some parents do call to see how things are going. So I can see why she answered the phone. I can't see why she answered it three times. After the second one, I would have called the cops. She's dumb. <laughs> you know, I don't know. That's, that's, that's like watching... Um, you ever watch that movie, Scary Movie? And in the beginning, the babysitter or this girl is home all by herself and this guy calls and she has a long 10-minute conversation with this idiot. I don't remember. There's so many different scary movies that that had that part in it wasn't it in scream or something yeah and and, uh and then and (laughs) and then instead of locking all the doors in the house she opens up the door and runs out that is just to me stupid and so isn't answering a telephone three times when it rings when you know all that's going to be on the other end is a heavy breather that's your typical horror movie though they always i mean don't hide, you know, don't go for the, the obvious best thing to go do. You go, like, let's hide in the basement, you know, where we can't escape. Let's go hide behind go. the, let's go hide behind these big, you know, tools of sharp objects. He won't find us here. Do you ever see that commercial that's on TV? Um, I forget what it's for, but. Yeah, Geico. The, <laughs> Geico, that's what it is, Geico. And these people, you know, one says, let's go in the attic. Let's go in the basement. And one says, well, why don't we just jump in the running car? And the other yeah, one and says, are you, are you crazy? Let's go hide behind the chainsaws. Yeah, I know. That's basically your typical horror slasher movie. Yeah. And make sure you and, have barely any clothes but, on. But this urban legend, and that's exactly what this urban legend sounds like to me. This urban legend just sounds like a bad movie scene. <sighs> Sorry, Holly's just saying some hilarious things. But uh, it's a chatter in our group. She's a <laughs> hilarious person. She's sharing some of her things and her experiences in chat. But it's, it's I'm, we're trying to be serious, but it's hard not to catch what she's saying. She's cracking me up. But, yeah, that's uh, definitely one that's been around for a long time. And, you know, I think if And like I was saying, something like this, something similar to this particular incident did happen for real in Alton, Illinois where a girl was babysitting and she kept, but she kept getting a, uh, crank phone calls and, um, obscene phone calls and, um, she just it scared her, you know, but she kept answering the doggone phone and so she called the operator and come find out, they found out later that at one time the house had two phone lines and the owners just quit using one and, um, never did have it turned off i don't know but the, but um he would call her and he would ask her if she when was the last time she went upstairs and checked on the kids i don't know anything more about the story i just it I kind of reminds me of like the... i don't know if, mm-hmm. if the babysitter mm-hmm. was injured or not but the police ended up and they did find a guy in the house it reminds me of one of those pedo creepers, you know? I mean, yeah. they, and they probably, you know, I know that there was some crimes that were just <laughs> like this that have occurred, so they could have spun the, the tales from that just to freak out people, just to make sure that the kids listen to the babysitter and the babysitter's doing her job right, you know, just right. to have these kind of stories. Where, but also there have been moments where the stories similar to that, maybe not 100% like that. Well, this happened. particular one, though, I'm wondering if this came out before, before that incident in Alton or after and I'm oh, wondering oh mean like a copycat thing where they yeah and, and so I'm like, wondering if it was it. a copycat thing I don't know when this uh, particular urban legend originated uh, from what I read it was late 60s early 70s and back then you could get an operator to you know all you had to do was dial zero and no they didn't have push button phones all you had to do was dial zero, and the operator would do that. Matter of fact, you could call the operator <laughs> for directory assistance. If you want to go way back, you just and click the phone. And it didn't cost phone. you click, nothing. Click, click. Yeah. Well, times are changed, but I don't know how much that thing would pass now because you got caller ID, everybody's got a cell phone and stuff, so it would either have to call it, come up blocked. You know, you can block your number with, was it star 69 or something? Yeah. 66 one of those things I think it's star 69 <laughs> that's when but, so but you have the I opportunity I don't use that feature 
you know, <laughs> if I do have caller ID and if a number comes up and I don't know the number, if it's somebody I don't want to talk to, I just don't answer the phone. She does that even if she knows the number. No. <laughs> Doesn't answer even if you know the number. Oh. I'll just well, like I, I said, if it's somebody I just don't want to talk to, but I can't imagine answering the phone three times when you know all you're going to get is heavy breathing and laughing. For one thing, if I answer the phone and there's somebody on the other end heavily breathing, I'm the one that's going to be laughing. It's your boyfriend looking for a date. Um, what about... They have, you remember the Russian scientist story that, you know, the, the urban legend, can't talk today, the urban <laughs> legend that, you know, said 1989, the, these Russian scientists in Siberia were drilling boreholes and they went, you know, about 14.5 kilometers deep into the earth crust and when the drill broke through into a cavity and the scientists lowered some equipment to see what was down in there, they said that the temperature was like more than a thousand degrees Celsius, but what like really freaked them out is the sound, the recorded in the sound they recorded by their instruments that they captured. And I, I think there's like YouTube things on this too. You know, somebody creatively made it up or if this is true or not, I don't know. But they also said they captured about 17 horrified seconds of audio before the microphone melted. And it basically convinced all the scientists that they heard these screams of the damned in hell. Now, many of the scientists quit their job and fled the area immediately, as you know the story goes, but those who um, stayed were in for like a bigger shock later that night. It, I guess a plume of like luminous gas bursts out of the borehole in the shape of like this giant winged demon. And it was saying, you know, I have conquered in, Ru you know, in Russia, Russian language. And it basically seared everybody into flames, you know, like they come, you know, how it just torched the bodies. This demon came out of the hole and torched everybody. That's Do you believe something like that is possible? Drilling down until you hit, what do they say? The, the core. Earth, yeah. The core. Don't they say that the Earth's core is like a volcano or something down there? There's people who There's also say that the Earth is hollow. And that's for another show. But, you know, because there's some things we're going to talk a little bit on that, well, but with other stuff. That, that's kind of on the same order order of that, what's it called, Merle's Hole out in Oregon or something. Where Oh, that, that was a creepy story. I remember listening to that when I was younger, and I was like, oh, man. I think they made a movie kind of tidbit off that, too. Remember there was like this, what was it? What's that little skeleton dude who had the Creeper or the Creep Show? Wasn't the that it? The Crypt Keeper. Keeper or whatever? Yeah, wasn't there like a movie that they did a little, a little tidbit on Mel's Hole where they kept lowering things Mel's down? Mel's Hole, that's what it was. Kept lowering things down in that hole well, and then Mel they would exchange was, stuff with him and then uh, Mel was on, stuff. Um, I think, Coast to Coast one time and he said that they never did find the bottom of that hole and he claimed that he sent a microphone down there and heard what he believed to be hell. And that's basically what these scientists are saying. Well, not just tell. He actually said he heard things, but then the, he would lower things down, and then these things would take things off and then swap things with it as well. Mm -hmm. And then I think they were talking about they had somehow lowered animals down in there. And then I think people kind were... Kind of like a sacrifice? No, I don't know what it was all about. But they were also talking about, I think there there was military men or something, that they were, use, you know, even lowering them down into the hole and seeing how far they could go down and see if they could see anything and whatnot. And I think that's where that horror movie came from, where they said, thanks for the best dinner ever, because then they ended up eating the people in that movie, remember? Yeah. And sent them back, like, a ton of gold or whatever it was. But I guess it's kind of oh, like... Wow, maybe I ought to dig a hole out in my backyard. I wouldn't want to hold that deep in anywhere near me. I mean... Might get gold. Well, then go investigate a sinkhole. Get I mean, enough gold, you can fill in the hole. Psh, that's a lot of gold to fill in a hole, especially No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the gold to fill in the hole. Just get what you think that you need that'll get what? you through the rest of your life and then shovel the dirt back in the hole. <laughs> I don't know what dream you're dreaming, but um, one, that's manual labor. I'm skipping, so... And two, yeah, that's, that's a long, true. a long way of well, digging. Well, all that gold, you can hire somebody to fill that hole in. And three, and three, it's like you're digging that much, you don't know what the heck you're gonna find down there anyway. You might strike, you know, 
a sewer line. Who knows? But it is, I don't know if the Russian scientists in Siberia, if this thing really happened or not. It's something that's been going around since the 80s or supposedly happened in the 80s. But there are, if you, you know, you can go on, because I've seen it on Facebook. I've seen it on random sites where you're just Googling, just looking at, you know, horror monster ghost this that whatever you know how we just randomly look things up and then all of a sudden they're like here we have the original audio tape from the scientists where they you know captured the sounds of hell and all you hear is thousands and thousands and thousands of people and agonizing pain that you've never even heard that type of sounds coming from people here you know what I mean it's just pure I, I want Awful. so do I it, believe it it's real? Makes you I wonder don't know. though how an urban legend like that would would, would even begin, but you know, it, like you said before, it's coming out of Russia. Well, I don't know if this originally came out of Russia, but this is what the story is stating that it was Russian scientists who did it. You know. I don't. I really don't believe any scientist would have done it. I don't care what country they're in. Well, I'm sure there's people who have tried to draw away to. But the there are people the who earth. believe in these urban legends. I mean, they absolutely believe in them. You know, they're they're afraid to do anything. Oh, don't dig that hole. I heard over in Russia they dug a hole and they ended up in hell. Well, there's other you know, people who I say, a, there's. but when we were kids, they say if you dig too deep, you'll find yourself in China. So come on. Yeah. Yeah, I just started to say that. You know, it, it or, or the dog would be digging out in the yard, you know, and my mom would say something like, well, if that dog goes, if that dog goes deep enough, he'll end up in China. You know, well, come to find out, China's not in the bottom of the world. But when you're a kid, you believe that. Then you go out in the backyard digging. Yeah. And then your mom and dad are like, what are you doing? I'm, I'm trying to, to get China. to China. I like egg rolls. You know, who cares? Now, I didn't yeah. mean that offensively, but I just, I mean, come on. I'm sure kids have tried that, period. Think about uh, it. I bet you millions of kids heard that story. And tried it out. Yeah, and tried it out. You know, how many kids went and grabbed a shovel and tried to dig their way to China? And then got their butts whooped for digging up the yard. Call in if you have. We'd like to hear the story. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> How many of you in chat have tried to dig yourself to China and your parents whooped your butt? Or not to, whooped it, um, but got upset. For digging in the yard. Raise your hand. Okay, nobody. Well, how can they raise their hand? I can see if they're... Well, one dude, <laughs> big boy, said he'd always get in trouble when he was out digging in the backyard. Yep, he says, people used to tell me that all the time when I'm digging. <laughs> I'm sorry and I mentioned the word egg rolls. Vamp is offended by the use of the word egg rolls. I apologize. I'll never mention egg rolls again. I love egg rolls, though. If I do, too. There's some really good ones, you know, at certain places. It's tasty. Um, as far as the Russian scientists, maybe there are scientists, or maybe there are people who did really try to bore all the way down to the center of the earth. I could see why, because they're scientists. They want to find out and test all the different layers and go with their theories of this, that, and well, whatever. That's true. But as far as them actually reaching it, I don't know. And if them sending down a microphone or a camera to see if they got something, is it possible? Yes, all of that is possible. Well, but you know, is, is this story that I'm reading true? I don't think so. And I also don't think some demon winged, ginormous. Uh, beast burst from the hole and set everybody aflame you know yeah really but you know speak it, it someday somewhere a scientist is going to get it in his head to build a machine and try to bore down to the core of the earth i'm sorry one of the chatters said my brother dug in the backyard but he ended up eating the dirt that he dug up that's uh, just gotta love that's boys disgusting gotta love boys <laughs> that's just what they do Eat worms. I would never admit dirt. to being that kid's brother or sister or brother. Or mother. Or mother. He was adopted. That's what my mother used to say every time I do something stupid. She's adopted. She still says that probably. She still says it. <laughs> okay. The uh the licked hand. The licked hand. The licked hand. Okay. This is an urban legend about a child who woke during the night, who would wake up frequently during the night, and she would hold her hand out to her dog who slept beside her, So, and the dog would lick her hand, and she'd go back to sleep. And then one night she woke up several times, 
by what sounded like a dripping faucet. And every time she woke up, she stuck her hand out to her dog. Dog would lick her hand. She would go back to sleep. Yeah, I was just saying, yeah, I'm here still, you know, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm here, you know, which that would be comforting. I can see it. Especially when you're a kid and you're afraid, your best buddy licking your hand. What? Uh, <laughs> that didn't no, sound right. I'm talking right. about the dog. <laughs> like, we're best friends, but don't lick my hand. Okay. <laughs> or my And then food. when morning came, she got up, went into the bathroom. She found her dog hanging from the shower rod, and its blood was dripping into the drain. And then when she she saw this, and when she ran back to her room, she found a note on her bed that read, Humans can lick, too. And the, wasn't the guy standing in the corner of her room or something? I don't know. That's where the urban legend ended. But I can see I can see a kid, you know, that's afraid of the dark or wakes up several times. There's got to be a reason why a kid will wake up several times in the middle of the night. You know, they got their... their dog down there and let's face it dogs and kids become best buddies that's their companions and you know stick your hand down there let the dog lick it's it's comforting but i want to tell you something if a leaking faucet wakes me up several times in the middle of the night i'm going to get up and fix that faucet with your shotgun (laughs) that's if that's what it takes if i can't find a wrench yep (laughs) your go-to thing is duct tape or shotgun gotta turn the tv channel bang you know but i don't know but even if a kid, you know, it had to have been a super annoying for her to, you know, what kid wakes up to turn off the faucet? They usually sleep through that, you know? Don't they yell out mommy or daddy? Well, this as the a, water's keeping me awake. As the story goes, her parents were out that evening and she's probably like a nine or ten year old. So it's okay for her to... So they left her alone? For an hour or so. It happens. It happens now. I mean, some parents... Didn't the parents go in that bathroom? Didn't the parents go in and check that kid? The parents weren't there. As the story goes, if you remember, the parents are out. and She's home alone, but they felt she was fine because she had a dog, so they had to go out and do something. They weren't... Or they just didn't get home from work yet. Maybe some parents don't get home till about nine or something. And, you know, so this thing occurs. This stranger knows the routine of these people's ins and outs so this stranger sneaks in and does creepy stuff and the thing of it is too as many times as that dog has licked her hand wouldn't she be able to tell the difference between that dog's tongue and another tongue i i don't even want to you don't want to go there okay yeah (laughs) (laughs) that you go so many different ways and so awful at the same time but you think she would have felt his fur or, you know, something. But if she's half asleep, it's super late, supposedly. Okay, yeah, you know, whatever. Stuff happens. Maybe she's just used to it. Maybe it wasn't even like, you know, whatever. Just a brief. And then <laughs> I have to ask myself, what is, what is the purpose of this particular story? Is this a story to that you tell your kids well if you don't go to sleep something's gonna lick your hand no i don't think that's the purpose of the story but it, to me it's more of the creep to me that's another somebody's gonna be under your bed and make sure that you don't get out of it i mean what is the purpose of this particular story well what happened to the girl did she die i mean she never started. did say so, it just said it, they never did say it, this has got to be one of those urban legends that apparently the entire thing was so maybe it's a lesson was to your, not told. Maybe it's a lesson for parents. Maybe it started going around for being a lesson for parents. So maybe you shouldn't be going out bar hopping and leaving your kid alone because this is you know creep pedophilers can creep into your house and you know do bad stuff to your kids and <laughs> kill. Big boy you. said the moral of the story is don't get licked. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I don't know where that originated from. If it came off of a true story of actually happening to somebody and, and some why would you creep. Tell, right. And why would you tell a child this story to scare them? That kid's going to go to bed and is either going to cry all night or keep looking under their bed or they're not going to sleep. I don't know. It's, I, I think that... It's one of those things where it probably expands to, and then the girl goes back to her room and sees the creepy guy in the corner. 
uh, like I said, I, apparently the entire story was not in, on that particular site. But it just, um, I don't know. I just, and the only reason I told that story is because I thought it was stupid. Well, it's not I stupid, that, but I it's thought... one of those urban legends that have gone around. It's, an urban it's one of the topper ones when you're reading through all the different lists. You always right. see that that's in one of the top 25, 20 of them. But I think it always expands where the the girl's pet's dead, and then she goes into the room and sees the creepo, creepy pedo, and then I know what he it was. Parents her. hated that dog, and they needed a way to get rid of it. That's awful. I don't. I'm not in agreement with what she just stated. <laughs> But I don't know what it was. I mean, I'm just saying, I'm thinking it's one of those creepy, and, and I can actually foresee this actually happening, where, because you have those creepy people who, you know, are totally into kids and, you know, stalking them and sneaking in, and I could, I could actually see this one happening. That's the sad case. Well, I didn't say that to be offensive, and I do apologize if anyone was offensive, uh, <laughs> offended <laughs> yeah. by that. Well, hey, they're offended by but me. I it, said egg It's rolls. like I said, the only reason I included this particular one is because I thought, for one, I thought it was stupid, and for another one, I just felt that it served absolutely no purpose whatsoever. Right. Um, but maybe that's, that's not even one I would tell around the campfire but maybe it was one that somebody made up thinking that it was really really creepy and you know it would scare people mm -hmm. i just personally i just find absolutely no purpose for that particular story but maybe that's what actually could have happened i mean think about all the creepy things that are always happening and there are single parents or there are parents who don't have to work at night and then it's like an hour or two change before the next because how parents have different work schedules and maybe the kid will be home for an hour or two by themselves between the two switch offs you know what i mean yeah. when the other parent comes so i mean this could be believable i can <laughs> foresee this one happening some creepy dude sneaks into the house and is messing with the kid and then you know does this stupid stuff i could see that happening so maybe this kind of came from something that actually did happen you know but it just kind of got watered down and left to what it was so that's what i could see it this one actually being possible well, someone someone says um uh said something about maybe it was a story that parents told their kids to make them behave if the kids you know if they had unruly kids i don't know I don't know. I, I know that. But of all, have, out of all the ones that we've said so far, this one seems like it's a possibility that it could happen. You know. Well, that's true. It is, it is a possibility. I got a cousin that when he was 17 years old, he got a sprained ankle, and he hurt it so bad that he couldn't put a blanket. <laughs> he couldn't put a blanket on it. He he said it hurt when he put the blanket on it. And he always slept fully under the covers. And I told him, I said, well, why don't you just cover up and just leave your foot out so it doesn't hurt. And he says, well, I can't do that because the man under the bed will grab it. Now, where do we get stories about men under the bed? What? Um, <laughs> that leaves very open for me to say anything. Where do we get creepy stories of men under the bed or the things under the bed? I think that's been around since, my gosh medieval times things creeping under in, in the darkness hiding in the closets and under the bed yeah i know i can't imagine putting my kids to bed say now you better go to sleep or the man under the bed will get you hey my grandma said creepy things i mean we'd be going and staying at her place in another state and we us three kids would be in a separate room from everybody else it was a small house but she had two big what queen-size beds in there and she would tuck us into bed and then she would say you guys have to stay in bed because if you don't the leprechauns are going to come and kill you because oh she gosh. said she made deals with these leprechauns and that's why they don't bother her but she said if you guys get out of bed then she can't protect us and they're going to take us out this really happened so I'd have you know all three of us would be staying in the same bed because we'd be like um freaking out right so I'd yeah. be in the middle and my one oldest brother would be on the 
edge of the bed where you could be attacked and the other brother that would be really bad if you had to pee and i did to that's it all night that's what i said this is what i'm coming up to right there's always been a time i'm the youngest so of course i'm gonna have to go to the bathroom you know so yeah. my one brother would be the one against the wall and the other brother who's the oldest poor him always got to be on the edge where the creature or the leprechauns could get him and i'd be in the middle and i'd be like dude i have to go to the bathroom well right at the edge of the bed was a bathroom so one brother would stand up and keep guard over the rest of the room and me and my other <laughs> brother would leap off the corner of the bed into the bathroom and he'd go first and he'd look he's like okay I don't see anything so he'd stand guard on the side of the door and on the other side of the door was the hopper in the bat the toilet and so I'd sneak around and pee and go to the bathroom really quick and then quick we'd leap back you know they'd be guarding and then we'd hurry up and leap back in the bed and we'd stay there until like daytime you know what and it then would be my luck so. I It'd be my luck. I'd be right smack in the middle of that bed. Nobody let me up. <laughs> You're doomed. No, I mean, they were good brothers. I'd be but, trapped there. But we were terrified. I mean, she told us this all the time. And I was like four, I think, when I heard that. And like, if you get out of your bed, the leprechauns are going to kill you. And I make deals with them so they don't, I don't mess with them. They don't mess with me. But I have no control of protecting you. And I'm just like, the, could you imagine saying that to your little kids? I'm sure they'd I stay couldn't in bed. imagine saying that at all. I mean, you know, the leprechaun stories I heard were, they were you know, evil at, and mean. At the at the, at the at the end of a rainbow, there's a pot of gold. Well, but, this and and leprechaun. I, my grandfather was from Ireland. He talked about leprechauns quite a bit, but well, yeah, I my, don't remember him ever mentioning any, a mean one. My grandma's mom was a uh, full Irish, so I mean, they had those stories, and we also you know bohemian and everything else but i mean they she said they were she always told us that they were mean they're you know mischievous and conniving and sneaky and dangerous and so you're hearing all this stuff and you know it kept us in bed i mean she won she kept us there so we never snuck out we never stayed up we i mean we stayed up but we didn't we were hiding under the covers praying that the leprechauns were going to kill us well then that movie finally came out the leprechaun movie when, I know. <laughs> and then and then me and my brother were like, oh, see? And we told everybody, that's see, what mean, we're talking about. They really are evil. And that's, you know, we always used to tell people when we were growing up, leprechauns are not like the cereal. You know, they're really evil. So I believe it. People do tell stories about little men and things under the bed that are going to get you, you know. And I think parents, like you said, they start that stuff up just to keep the kids in bed because they, they're wore out, they're tired, they don't have patience, they're like, done with it you know what I mean yeah <laughs> I just I'd never heard a story about a mean leprechaun I did watch the movie hey it, I grew up listening matter of fact to it was it. on here not too long ago on the sci-fi channel right <laughs> and the first thing that popped into my head was these cannot be the same creatures my grandfather used to talk about because according to him they uh they just brought you beer and danced with you when you were drunk. Maybe they weren't leprechauns. <laughs> Maybe they weren't leprechauns. You drink enough beer, you don't see anything. That's true. Um, but it, that's what I'm saying. I think a lot of those stories stemmed from parents way back to medieval times trying to keep the kids in bed or getting them for not wandering off to go play out in the dark or, you know, not to cause mischief. What another, I mean, what a best way to keep your kid in bed. If not, freak them out for the rest of their life. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think some of these stories were just told to um, to make your kids mind. You know, I'm putting you because I I, use, I, I never would stay in bed. I they put me to bed, I'd be right back up. So I I can see where they might say something to keep their kid from getting up out of bed you know like there's mean leprechaun under your bed there's a man under your bed and he's going to grab you there's a monster in your closet if you come out of that bed it's going to jump out and get you first of you all if, and if your parents you are telling you that you have a man under your bed what kind of parents do you have i'd be like do your job and chuck him out the door you know well, why are you said that. but why are you allow? you know i'm just saying if parents do say that i'm like why would you allow a man to live under your kid's bed i mean that's what your kid's probably thinking like I'm moving to grandma's. Well, I'm sure they probably said else. monster or demon or something. Or maybe it that was something creepy. Or the clown. Yeah. Maybe they didn't say man, you know, or that's that's one I've heard before. The clown under the bed. The clown under your bed. I was never said to me, but I've heard I've heard people say it to their kids. Uh, but um, it, it's just why would you tell your kids that? And then they wonder why kids are neurotic. 
you know, why kids won't go to bed. Like, they need a nightlight because wh when they got the nightlight on, the monster's not going to come out of the closet or the monster's not going to come out from underneath the bed. That's probably you why know? adults and, still sleep with the light on, you know? Yeah. Think about it. There's still adults who will sleep with the TV going or they have to have a sun sound going or the light because if it's totally quiet <laughs> and dark, then... You know, they still have these fears that were put in them by these stories that were told to them just because people wanted them to get to bed. <laughs> Somebody said, Chuck Norris is under my bed. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that would be creepy alone. Chuck Norris is a wimp. He'd be out working out. Because he's always selling that workout equipment. That'd be f creepy. Him in his biker shorts. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I can I can see Chuck Norris, little bitty Chuck Norris, underneath my bed on that little on that exercise machine. Well, you know they always say, <laughs> I don't even want to see them. Yeah, I don't even see them under here now, by cracky. Yeah, I don't even want to see the visions you have in your head. But that also probably has to do with the same things where they say that things are under your bed. Then you got the things in your closet. I mean, even if people didn't even mention it, I think every kid was always freaked out buy a closet when they're trying to go to bed i don't know why it is but it always seems like everybody you talk to always had experience of a closet you know something yeah. in the closet's gonna get you and that's why you always tell your parents you know don't quote close the closet make sure it shut check the closet yeah. before i go to bed you know and that's yeah, and you and you see those little things on tv where the daddy's taking her kid to bed you know and he says nope no monsters under the bed closets all clear no monsters in the closet here's your nightlight but um, I, it, it, it makes you wonder how stories like that get started. You know, why does a kid think there's a monster under their bed? Probably from that stupid little movie called Monsters. Well, it came before movies. I mean, this has been around before movies, this is before people had TVs and radios. And, I mean, these are things that go around, that have been around for a long, long time. Like I said, some of them, if you go back and look at urban legends, some of them gone since back before medieval times. So, Well, there have been stories told like I said in the beginning uh, there, there have been stories told as long as man's been on earth about something or other you know and it's always and it's always something scary sorry about that guys we lost connection for a second Skype and the internet's been a little weird today because of storms or whatever so I think we should be back and streaming right now if spooky just needs to start talking but I think she was talking about ghosts and what have you so sorry about that it's one of those weird things that happen spooky has storms going on and everything else so spooky are you back we lost our broadcast there for a second. well yeah but we've been back for a while so it's kind of just killing and talking a little bit so anyway you were talking about what have you ghosties and thingies so in the closet <laughs> under the bed <laughs> legends mm -hmm. urban legends Ever since, and for years and years, for hundreds of years, there's been scary stories told. Told, but I'm wondering though, how many of them were out of superstition? Right. Uh, the, you know, because there's always. I, I'm sure Bigfoot at one time was an urban legend. As far as I'm concerned, Bigfoot's still an urban legend. Well, uh, they have. Well, that and they have that werewolf man who attacked certain people on the track. That was another urban legend that got people fearful and not wanting to go out at night and all that other stuff as well. You know, so keep going. I fixed all the sound thing. This is the glitch. It happens uh, once in a blue moon. My audio is low. It's not anymore because I just fixed it. So just keep talking. But, see, we just had a quick glitch. It happens. We don't have professional equipment. We're just using Skype and a basic streamer thing. So, you're going, That's we're, we're going to have issues. We just do this because, you know, it's something that Spooky's always wanted to do. So, we just banter back and forth. We're not professionals with big radio stations and, and in, what have you. And those so. in chat where I can read your messages, if my audio comes back up, please let me know. Um... I, I, I don't, uh, like I said, though, nobody knows where these stories come from. Uh, nobody knows how they got started. And it's like I said, you know, are they really tall tales or are they things that actually happen to real people? Right. That's so. why I said, like, some of these are believable, you know, so some of the ones we told so far, not the scientists boring down into the ground and being burnt to death by you know, demon-winged 
things. That one I don't believe. That would that, I don't believe that one either. For one thing, if they're boring down into the ground, when they get to a certain point, you know, I mean, that heat's going to start melting something. Right. You know, how are they going to protect themselves? They can't put on an asbestos suit or a fire suit because that, let's face it, that's just not, that's like, that, that's like drilling down, you know, jumping into a volcano. Nor do we so. suggest people to try it out. Um, and I also don't believe in, you know, the the baby bridges. I mean, they have them. Okay, okay, it could have happened, right? People throw themselves off bridges and stuff, and it, it could have dated back from the 1800s. One of them, it possibly could have ended up being a true story. But, you know, if you go there and putting in all the flour and all that stuff around, I don't believe it. I don't think well, it happened. Well, that one story... That one story but if it told, does, if somebody does have proof of it happening, get it all on video and share it with us on Facebook or right. with the show. We'll put it on the air and show the video. Either, either that, you know, or you can always go to um, uh, to to your friend of a friend's best buddy's cousin's girlfriend. Because, like I said before, that girl wouldn't lie. Well, yeah. Some... Apparently, it totally happened to her. That one story you told, though, about um, the people having the baby and the doctor killed the baby. I mean, you could tie that one in with the Jersey Devil because that's the legend of the uh, the Jersey Devil. You know, that woman, she was having her 13th kid, and she knew that she couldn't support the kid and knew that it was just more burden on her, and she cursed the child as she was giving birth to it. Right, and it came out deformed, and and it came to, it came out deformed, and it uh, roamed the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. You know, I mean, if you really stop and think about it, those two stories are kind of told, and they may be some variation of each other, just told in a different state or area or whatever. Yeah, you never know about these things because, like I said before, you know they. It, it, they start out small stories and then as they're t retold and retold and retold over the years and they get more they embellish on them more they exaggerate more they add more to it anything to make it scary well and a lot of us like scary stuff anyway but <clears throat> well, that's true i don't mind sitting around a campfire telling a scary story you know i mean i've told a few myself we should invent some and start our own urban legends get a reading group just do like the Somebody say a couple words, somebody say a couple words, and you just keep going until they hit the end, and then we'll just print it out and be like, here's the new, you know. And it really happened yesterday to a kid in my own neighborhood, you know, that kind of BS. But, you know, they always have these things, and I believe that, you know, these have been around. They've been brought over from when people came over here from different countries, and they kept up their you know, monsters and urban legends and the, the things that harass them over in their homelands, and then they bring that over here, you know? Right, right, because you can go anywhere on Earth, anywhere on Earth, and there is an urban legend of some sort. This is not something that is just um, uh, centered in the United States or even in Russia that you can go to literally any country on earth and they have urban legends they have several of them they could tell probably hundreds the creepy ones i don't like is like when they say don't go into the woods and stuff because there's freaky stuff out there i think the freakiest thing i don't want to run into is like a big spider okay because that's the thing i, I hear you you know because they always make these horror movies of like you know killer snakes and that and stuff that movies i'm not even scared of that i you know because it's there's no way in heck a snake's going to be, like, a million times that huge ever, you know? There's some huge ones in Africa or whatever, but they're not that huge. But, you know, their spiders get pretty big in the woods. I don't know if you ever hang out in the woods or whatever, but I've seen spiders bigger than my hand tropping yeah. around. So that stuff's creepy. We find them around. You, you find them around here once in a while. That stuff, spiders are creepy. They're icky anyway, you know? I mean, I go into a flat panic when I see one, and then it's dead. Well, they have that urban legend of that girl, you know, tanning on the beach, and she felt something crawling up her face, and she swished at it, and you know, cause she was tanning, and it went down her neck or whatever, and then weeks later, she had, like, this huge pimple-like thing on her face, and she went to pop it, and hundreds of baby spiders started running oh, out of yeah. it, you know, or the girl <clears throat> who never washed her hair, you know, and then all of a sudden, it was an invest infestation of spiders in your hair, so that's why you should always wash your hair. There's so many multiple versions of 
urban legends from bugs one of, to I was, monsters I was talking to, to one what have I was you. talking to one of my sisters and uh, just the other day, and I was telling her that tonight's show was going to be about urban legends. And she said that when she was growing up back in the 70s, 60s or 70s, she said that the thing then was they used to tease their hair. And they get it, you know, they tease it and get it real high and everything. And she used to put toilet paper around her head to keep her hairdo in. I guess they did that. I don't know. And she said that one time mom told her that if she did not start brushing her hair out more often, that mice were going to make a nest in it. So, it, it, it I mean, you hear some sort of story all the time you know the per I remember one time uh, uh, an aunt told me we were eating watermelon and I swallowed a seed and she told me she says now a watermelon is going to grow in your stomach oh I heard that one too or if you, you swallow know, your I, gum if you swallow your gum it's going to be a forever in your stomach and it's never going to yeah. pass and then you know kids keep doing it and then they're like you're going to be weighed down so when you go swimming you're going to drown and like yeah that's another urban legend you know you're going to grow a watermelon so what do you do eat like a bunch of seeds just to prove her wrong no I just kind of ignore her because she's nuts anyway <laughs> But it, it's, it, you know, it, it, the, the, the point is a story that people tell their kids. You know, well, I know somebody that a watermelon seed sprouted in their stomach and it just, and their stomach exploded. Oh, yeah, oh, well, that might have been interesting to see. I'd pay a dollar to see that. Oh, yeah, but, and like the thing that they, I mean, we've heard this before, but I'm sure they put it, I think they had on scary movies too. It was like, don't mix Coke and um, Pop Rocks, remember? Yeah. Because if you mix po uh, Coke and or soda and Pop Rocks, you'll explode and, you know, what have you. So, of course, what are people going to do? Run out and do it, right? So. Well, that's like that Coke and Mentos thing. You know, after, they, after somebody demonstrated how a, a drop in uh, a Mentos in a bottle of Coke and the Coke bottle took off, how many people do you think ran out and made... Coke bottle bombs. rockets with Mentos and Coke. Everybody. Everybody. I did it. But you know? well, and, and then they and, move. And by the way, it works in in other sodas too. It worked in Seven Up. So does uh, um, dry ice, but I would not suggest using dry ice because that's literally or, like a bomb. Uh, like, or, or back in the fifties, they tell you, you know, well, if you put peanuts in your Coke, you'll get drunk. I don't think so. I have never heard that. Now, that was one from back in the 50s. Now there's going to be like a ton of people who are going to uh, run out and put peanuts, peanuts in their, their soda and see if they get, get drunk. Salty Coke. Have you tried? So you tried get. it? Sure, I did. <laughs> now I wasn't running around back in the 50s, but this is something I just did recently, just to, just to see. Yesterday. And it was in Pepsi, so I guess it don't work in Pepsi. I tried this out yesterday, and it doesn't work. No. I was robbed. I tried it out this week. It was one that my sister told me. She says, well, back in the 50s, they told you if you put peanuts in your Coke, it'd get you drunk. Oh. They don't even make sense. Were they stupid back then? No, but... They don't need that... that that little <laughs> urban legend doesn't even make sense. No, but she might have said it just to mess with you. Let's take a, a quick intermission. But for those of you who are listening over at our Ustream site or Facebook and you want to come and join in the chat and banter with those people who are in here, just scroll down and you'll find the URL to our website. It's anything but ordinary.2.com at wix.com, right? I guess she already left. So I'm going to go on, we're going to do a quick intermission and we'll be back in three minutes. So if those of you guys want to get up, get a drink stretch or get a snack, we'll be back in three minutes.
Welcome back to Anything But Ordinary. This is Raven, and here is Spooky. Anyway, like we said, we just had a little issues earlier and just corrected a little bit, and we apologize. We thank you all for sticking with us. Like you say we don't have professional equipment, but we enjoy doing this, and we enjoy those who pop into our chat and make us laugh, and sometimes you end up on our show by us That's talking true. about it. So thanks. That's true. So uh, where were we at? My turn, right? My turn. Your turn. Whoa. My turn. My turn. It's her turn. Okay. <clears throat> this this is one. It's called Don't Turn On The Light. Wait, we did that one. No, we did. And we told about Lick The Hand. And the phone? And no. We're going to do Don't Turn On The Light. Okay. Wasn't that the college student one? That's the one now. Yeah, I think you told that one earlier. You can tell it again, I don't care. I believe you already said that one, but it's all good. Okay. There are several versions to this particular story, but the one that's told the most is there was a young college girl who was studying late at the library. And during this late night studying, she realized that she forgot something back at her dorm room, so she decided to make a quick trip back to retrieve it. When she got back to her dorm room, it was dark, and she thought that, well, maybe her roommate was asleep or wasn't home, and just so um, not to take any chances, she didn't turn on the light. She just ran in, got what she needed, and went back to the library. Right. So later, when she returned to her dorm room, the light was on, and her roommate was lying on the floor with her throat slit. And there was a message in lipstick on the bathroom mirror that said, aren't you glad you didn't turn on the light? Right. I think they also had that one where it was like her, her blood was on the wall, too, where, where yeah. she came in and aren't you glad, you know, you didn't turn her on, just go to bed and didn't see all that stuff. Yeah, I've heard that one a few times in different, like, versions, like you said. So um, that would be creepy. Is this one told just to make you turn on a light instead of walking in a dark room? Well, maybe sometimes they didn't want to turn on the light in the college dorm, you know, when you're sharing rooms because you don't know if your friends have Because a friend I, do, I do that a lot. I'll just walk into a dark room, get what I want, and walk out. But then again, I know, I, you know, I mean, I know my house. Right. Well, they were probably running and running out, but, hey, she was probably, you know, sometimes it's best to listen to your instinct. Is this one possible? I believe it is. Yeah, I believe this one's possible, too. I mean, there are a lot of maniacs out there. I believe this one is possible because, I, you know, I mean, I've read stories and I've heard stories on the news where people have gotten murdered with people in another room, and they didn't hear a thing. So I believe that something like this is possible. I think it's creepy, but I think it's possible. With everything that's going on, heck yeah, just kind of like that kid one too. You know what I mean? Where, yeah, and there, but there's, you know, like but I said, this one's there, more plausible. Yeah, this one's more plausible, but there are a there are several versions to this particular one, but this is the one that is the most popular. There was another version where she, um, uh, when she came back, there was blood all over the wall and the ceiling, and you know whatever or. And there's another one where she walked in and found her friend in the bathtub with her throat cut. And on the bathroom mirror, it said, aren't you glad you didn't turn on the lights? You know, it, it's there. There's just even it, even the licked hand is tied into this one. Right. That reminds me of when you said the bathtub thing. It makes me think of when they're like, don't travel alone abroad because, you know, then you'll end up losing your kidneys or you know what I mean? You know how they yeah that's a, yeah that's another that's, urban legend they got cracking forever you know or don't go to Mexico and get too drunk or you'll lose. actually that one about the missing kidney still goes around I think it's actually happened to somebody and that's how it started I think it did actually happen to someone at some point and I think it that's how it just came a buzz you know what I mean but yeah I mean because they're it, selling organs you know. Um, Don't get too drunk when you're on vacation. I'm trying to think of what country it was. Uh, but I just read something on that not too long ago uh, when I was uh, researching urban legends. And I think that you're right. I think that that one 
that urban legend did come out of something that did happen. But I can't remember what com what country it was. But they were. Uh, well, let's hope it uh, wasn't from a company, because. Well, it was mainly American tourists, though, that it would happen to. I think it happened like uh, two or three American tourists, and. Um, they were knocked out with something, some sort of drug or something. Then when they woke up, they were laying in a bathtub filled with ice and they had a kidney missing. Right. Or some sort of organ. I don't think it was necessarily a kidney. I, I think it was some sort of organ missing from their body that was sold on the black market. Well, you know, that that's, could be plausible too because to this, to this day, organs are sold on the black market because people are tired of waiting on the donor li or on the recipient list. Right. That's one of those things. Are, are they also like, I can't remember, but I mean, that's the whole big thing, losing your organs or being, you know, put into the sex trade. That's always the big urban legend things that will happen if you tra travel abroad and alone and don't stay sober enough. You may end up in, yeah. you know. Or they'll steal your kid and sell your kid on the black market to a childless couple. Things like that go on today. I mean, it does happen. Every I mean, single yeah, day, it does everywhere, it, it in every city. It may not go city. on constantly, but it does go on today. So, actually, you know, I mean, if it's something that is happening, can you call it an urban legend? I don't think so. I don't so. know. Well, that's those. That's the ones that have always gone around. But nowadays, I mean, maybe back in the day, it wasn't as huge as it is now. But there are people being kidnapped every single day from every single city, from kids to you know people and used for sex trafficking are being sold off for slave labor and other well, countries there are and pregnant everything else. women murdered just for, for their, their babies. babies yeah from from crazy childless women and, and on some occasion crazy childless couples so these are things that go on to this day and you know i mean there what about three or four years ago there was a rash of them going on so it so that's why I say, if, if it's something that's going on now, is it is it an urban legend? No, it's a true story. Well, yeah, but that's what I said. I mean, this is one of the topics you picked, and he said, well, are, are these true. are these true? Are they just fictitious and made up things to scare people into you know behaving and doing what this or that or not doing this or that? You know, and it's not just scary stuff. They have you know stupid stuff that are urban legends too like you know such and such re restaurant serves people or horse meat or you know just stupid things I mean it ranges from such a wide variety of different things that are out there but that's what happens someone starts something and it becomes this huge you know or the girl who choked on, on a you know because they had cooked something on the grill and that wire piece got in there and she choked on it you know which that actually happened to be a true story for somebody it did happen to a girl where her dad did clean the grill with a wire brush and the wire br part of the wire brush broke off and got into one of the hamburger meat and it and she ended up did choking on it went to the hospital that did actually happen to someone i can't remember where it was but it is stated and listed and you see the hospital uh, record thingy that they were showing on the internet but I mean there's so many varieties of these things that have been going on forever you know so. oh yeah absolutely and we're just we're not even hitting a minute piece of it yeah we're know? just I tossing mean, I, stuff when I, was, out. when I was researching urban legends mm -hmm. and uh, it, I mean there were literally thousands of them out there you know you couldn't possibly read them all well every I think also every state has that you know the, the story of the a, a packed car of teenagers driving to prom and you know there's some kind of road problem like it was raining or it was snowing and the the road condition wasn't that great and they curve and they're going around this sharp curve and they you know weren't paying attention and they go winding off and lose control and crash into the ditch and one of the passengers gets killed and you know every you know all up to this day if you go down this road at a certain time, you know, or if it's raining or what have you, then you'll see this person wandering around, you know, a girl or a guy in their prom outfit, you know. Yeah. And they're, and, they're, and they're looking, and, they're... and then some of them will go beyond that and, and they'll say it's the hitchhiker. Well, they pick up this hitchhiker and ask him where they needed to go, and they say, I needed to go to such and such place, you know. So then they bring, like, the lady in white, remember? 
That's one of those yeah. huge things. So they're always talking about some kid somewhere was killed on some road, you know, because... Oh, there are, there are literally literally hundreds of stories about kids being, teenagers being killed on prom night. But And the thing of it is, is that a ghost story or is that an urban legend or are they one and the same? I don't know. Or is it true? Who knows? I mean, people or do see... True? Some people do see things. Some people never well, experience Well, on prom it. night, unfortunately, some kids do drink. And some kids do end up in accidents and some kids do end up dying. And it's just an absolute shame. And it's no wonder that there would be literally hundreds of urban legends about um, prom night. Mm -hmm. Well, there's also those... This It goes with the same thing with the teenagers who somebody hung themselves on such and such bridge or under such and such tree by such and such road or killed themselves here and then if you go out here you'll see that person still roaming around and yeah you know what have you so there's always those urban legend parts that are well, always there's going one, on too. There, there's one here on one of the country roads where um and this did happen um i think it was back in the 80s might have been the 70s there were a bunch of kids riding along on on the back country roads through the hills and stuff and they ended up uh and they were drinking yeah, and uh um, they had a wreck and uh one of the people in the car was decapitated and they say if you go up to that spot on a certain night night at a certain time you'll see that guy walking around looking for his head or say their name or, or call yeah. out from or whatever and and there's always that urban legend where if you drive down this road at a certain time every year you'll see this spirit who's wanting to catch a ride and then once you get past a certain point the person will disappear from your car you know right or you end up taking them home and can these things happen i mean have they happened yeah i believe there's multiple car crashes that happen when you got a packed car full of teenagers or a packed car full of drunks or anybody it can happen to anybody really especially if right. there's bad weather but nowadays it's more worse because people are texting and driving so i, I mean, know there's definitely it, way more and it's not only kids doing it you know and there are a lot of accidents we've had several accidents in this area not around the, this the town that i'm close to but it it's been in this area, in a three-county area, where kids have been in car wrecks because they're texting. And now, um, in this state, talking on your cell phone or texting while you're driving is illegal. And the police will stop you. They will give you a ticket. If they catch you, but there's so many people doing it. It's not just kids. I see adults all the time driving around. Well, adults do somewhere. it, too. I and I just think they, they're not even even the ones are not texting, but they're looking down at their phone. They're on the Facebook. You drive by, they're driving slow. They're weaving between the lanes, and I'm even paying attention. And then you drive up next to them, and you look over, and you see them scrolling down, looking at Facebook. It's like, is that really that important? What's on Facebook while you're driving 65 miles per hour? You know. Well, for one thing, I don't like talking on a phone. Okay, and I, it. What do I, you know, I, I can't understand why these people need that phone up at their ear 24 hours a day or every waking minute or they've got a text. I got nieces that they'll come and visit you and they don't say anything because they're too busy texting. How can you find that much to talk about that you cannot put your phone down when you're driving a car? Yeah, well, driving and talking and texting is not an urban legend, but people getting accidents from that and then the story of them haunting and the spot from then it seems to be a huge urban legend in every story like uh chatter mentioned that they have uh, uh holly mentioned that they have a bridge in her area it's called the suicide bridge and they don't allow people to go up there you know so there's always the suicide bridge there's always the suicide corner you know and yeah or the hanging tree or there you know we got one there's an urban legend down around st louis where this couple parked on this one dead end road and they were going to get a little frisky and um, they kept hearing something hitting the car. And when the guy stepped out of the car, there was a guy hanging from the suicide tree and he was hanging low enough that his feet were hitting the car. Mm -hmm. And instead of driving off, they both jumped out of the car and took off running. That part to me was stupid. Yeah, why wouldn't you? And when the they looked away? back, the guy that was hanging there was gone 
Now, yeah. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't jump out of my car and run. I would gun it and drive it out. I'd get away a lot faster. So, if there ever comes to a point where we're in a horror movie together, hang out with you because you'd be logical enough not to do the stupid stuff. I'm not going to hide behind the chainsaws. Right. Well, there's another urban legend that I believe. It's called the Russian Sleep Experiment. And I'm, I know some people have heard this one before, but it was towards like the... It was a little bit longer one, but it's towards the 1940s. Russian researchers conducted a study in which five prison inmates were um, sealed like up in an airtight chamber and dosed with, you know, a different experimental stimulant gas to test the effects of prolonged sleep deprivation. Now, their behavior was observed via uh, like a two way mirror and their conversations monitored uh, like electronically, and they had been promised freedom if they could go without sleep for 30 days so of course these guys are like um yeah you know I'm jumping on that because they don't want to spend the rest of their life in prison so the first few days of the experiment passed and nothing really happened well by the fifth day however the subjects began showing you know signs of stress and complaining about certain circumstances and they stopped conversing with their uh, the other fellow inmates in the room with them and, they, and choosing instead to whisper compromising information about one another into the microphones and apparently in an effort to win the trust of the researchers which you know basically paranormal was setting in by the fifth day of them not sleeping with all the gas now on the ninth day screaming began now first one subject then another and then it was observed they were running around frantically around the chamber and screaming at the top of his lungs for an hour for like hours and hours on end and then even more just concerning was the reaction of the other subjects in the room. They began ripping apart the books that they'd been given to read. They were smearing the pages with, you know, feces and plastering them over the mirror windows so that they could no longer be observed by the scientists. You know, so they basically papered up the mirror, you know. Right. Anyway, the screaming stopped, and so did the whispering. So three days passed without a sound from inside the chamber. Now, the scientists fearing the worst the researchers spoke to the subjects over the intercom and they were saying we are opening the chamber to test the microphones they said step away from the door lie flat on the floor or you you'll be shot and compliance will earn one of you your immediate freedom a voice from inside the chamber answered we no longer want to be free that's what they heard back after you know a few days of complete silence. Well, two more days passed without contact as the researchers debated what to do. Well, they decided to terminate the experiment, and at midnight on the 15th day, the stimulant gas was flushed from the chamber and replaced with fresh air in preparation for them to, you know, release the subjects and go in there. Well, far from being pleased at this, you know, the prospect of leaving the chamber, the subjects begin screaming as if in fear for their lives. Well, they begged to have the gas turned back on. Instead, the researchers unsealed the door to the chamber and sent an armed soldier inside to retrieve them. Now, nothing could have prepared them for the carnage that they witnessed upon entering this room after, you know, 15 days. One of the subjects was found dead, lying in several inches of bloody water. Chunks of his flesh had been torn off and stuffed into the floor drain. And all the other test subjects were found to have been severely, mu- you know, mutilated. I can't say that word, sorry. Mutilated. Thank you. And in fact, the wounds appeared to be self-inflicted. Well, they had ripped open their own ad- admins, sorry. Abdomens. Say it. Thanks. With their bare hands and <laughs> disemboweled themselves. And some had even eaten their own flesh. Well, the four who were still alive were terrified of falling asleep and refused to leave the chamber again pleading with the researchers and the scientists to turn the gas back on. Well, when the soldiers attempted to remove them by force, the inmates fought back like crazy, you know, and one of them suffered a ruptured spleen and lost so much blood that there was literally nothing left for his heart to pump. And he continued flailing for, you know, a full three minutes before his body finally went limp and he died. Well, the remaining subjects were finally restrained and transported to a medical facility for treatment well the first two uh to be operated and fought you know against these doctors and scientists from operating on them from being you know 
anesthetized and that he tore his muscles and broke bones during the whole struggle. Well, as soon as the anesthesia, what do you call it, the anesthesia, anesthesia took effect, his heart stopped. Well, the rest of the subjects underwent surgery without sedation. So far from feeling any pain, however, they laughed hysterically on the operating table. Like, you know, just demonic type, insane laughter. You know, like they were just gone. You know, mentally not themselves. So the the doctors, fearing for their own, you know, safety and whatnot, and for these guys, they administrated or administered this type of, you know, I don't know, medicine type thing that would make them immobile where they couldn't move their bodies. You know what I mean? Paralyze them. So basically, yeah, that's what they're saying. So after the surgery, the uh, survivors were asked why they had mutilated themselves and why they so desperately wanted to go back onto the stimulant gas. Well, each gave the same answer, and all the answers was, I must remain awake. Now, the researchers considered euthanizing them to, you know, basically get rid of every trace of this failed experiment, but were overruled by their commanding officer who ordered that it be resumed immediately, with the three of the researchers joining the inmates in the sealed chamber. So not only were they going to leave, you know, let the remaining crazy inmates back into the chamber, but they were going to make three of the researchers join in them and close them in there. Well, horrified at that prospect, the chief researcher pulled out a pistol and shot the commanding officer point blank, and he then turned and shot one of the two surviving subjects. And pointing his gun at the last one left alive, he asked, what are you? I must know. And then the inmate said have you forgotten so easily the subject said smiling we are you we are the madness that lurks within you all begging to be free at every moment in your deepest animal mind we are what you hide from in your beds every night we are what you sedate into silence and paralyze you when you go into the nocturnal haven where we cannot tread now the researcher fired a bullet into his heart and the EEG monitor flatlined as the subject mur- murmured these last words so nearly free. And that is a story where th- this has been going on for like ever where these scientists did this experiment with these inmates and basically they stayed awake this whole time and just went crazy and it's almost like they became demon like something stepped into them, you know what I mean? Right. And so that's one of those urban legends that's been going around forever and ever and ever where people keep stating that this is a true story, you know. I don't know if it's true or not because there are people who have done testings on people or whatever. So it's a possibility that because you can go crazy and hallucinate even after a few days of being awake, you know. That's true. That's true. You but can. they were given a stimulant gas to keep them awake. So well, it makes you wonder if it was the gas that made them hallucinate or not. But if you stop and think back uh, about World War II and the experiments that the German doctors and scientists performed on prisoners of war and which was the Holocaust Mm -hmm. which was the Holocaust they did all kinds of horrendous experiments on these people so and you say this one come out of Russia um, this one was called, hold on, I got notes, because I'm sorry, I can't do shows without notes. <laughs> it's Neither called, can I. I have to have my notes to remind me what I'm going to talk about. Oh, right, you know, because I just need to do it, just my thing. But it's called the Russian Sleep Experiment, and the claim that happened at, towards the end of the 1940s, you know, and they did these experiments on these inmates or whatever. But, I mean, to me, I could kind of see this happening because if they're, you know, keeping people awake for 30-some days, 50, you know, and they've only made it to 15, but they're pumping them with this, this gas and a body, you need sleep and you need water and you need to eat, right? And there's, well, I've so had many- friends that ha- had, you know, tested this theory out about can you really who lose like can you die if you don't sleep or whatever. And I've had friends who stayed up without anything helping them for days, and they were like telling me it was like the coolest euphoric type of feeling before you crash. They're like you're hallucinating, you're seeing things, you're hearing things, and they were telling me all this weird things that was happening to them. And I'm like, maybe you need to go to bed, you know, because it doesn't sound like it's a good thing to me, you know. But I, I know, know that it happens. Sleep deprivation. Uh, de- uh, deprived oh, yeah, yeah. of sleep and uh, I heard I, now I've never stayed up long enough that I hallucinated okay but I have heard that um, and I did 
ask a doctor this one time because I had a friend that claimed that he had stayed up six for six days and he was talking about these hallucinations he had and this doctor did tell me that if you deprive if you are deprived of sleep after a while you do start hallucinating you do start having um, oh what's the word I want what well you see things you go crazy and what have you I know but you you just your mind just is not right either I can't think of the word I want but you and you start imagining all sorts of things and pretty soon he said he didn't know it for a fact he said but you can that there is a possibility that you can get to a point to where you're afraid to go to sleep because you start getting paranoid right that happens with crack people too I'm sure because they're not sleeping and, not, and up on drugs for a long, long time and they're hallucinating and I think a part of it has to do with the fact that they hadn't been sleeping for days as well as being on drugs but I think that that plays a role in the part why those people are you know seeing crazy stuff and then doing crazy stuff and get paranoid but I'm thinking after so many days of being pumped and you're breathing the stuff and it's not oxygen and you're sealing you're, you're locked in this tiny room and stuff you know it would have to be the gas, though. It, 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 if this saying, happened, part of which it. personally I don't believe it did, but there is a possibility that it did you happen. Know, I mean, I mean it effects, is plausible to. I mean, people doing experiments on people. Yeah, exactly. But it seems to me that it would have been the gas that caused all of this. Started them, but not just that, but not sleeping after 15 days. I can't even but imagine that. Wasn't the that. gas supposed to keep them from sleeping? Right, it does keep them from sleeping, but yet they're still not sleeping either. So that it's like a two-parter as well. And then I can see them after so many days, you start to go crazy, you're getting paranoid. You know, they were starting to ride each other out and saying, "If you get me out of this, I'll do this." And then after a certain point, that's when they decided they they just everybody changed, and they didn't want things to change. They didn't want them to turn off the gas or everything else. I'm thinking by that point, maybe these people were already dead because they were already self mutilating themselves. And missing body parts because they, like I said, they disemboweled themselves. And I think I'm thinking these things already died. Maybe something stepped into them, like you know, when we talk about attachments and whatever else. Well, maybe this is the darkness that everybody has in them, or the things that follow them around, and it just stepped in. And that's why they didn't want to this body to be put to sleep because once the body puts to sleep, then this thing's without a body again. So that would make sense why that thing said this. You know, we no longer want There's to be all, free. There's all sorts of possibilities on when this it comes to this creepy story. story. Yeah, it's yeah. creepy, and I know I didn't read. I, w- I was on a trip one time, Perfect, but yeah, and I drove for 48 hours straight on this trip, and I happened to be going across <sighs> this bridge, and I slammed on my brakes because I could have sworn that I saw a bear on the bridge. Now I was in a state that does not have bears, so it. It, 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 that doesn't it stop just, you from it, seeing things. I mean, you, I know you be it, the it one who sees odd stuff. It didn't stop me from stuff. seeing this bear on the bridge. Yeah. And I just and I just sat there, and it was in the middle of the night, and I just sat there, and I watched this bear. And then it finally dawned on me, that's not a real bear. It was a carving on the bridge. Oh, so you're close to so hallucinating. A, and... So you, you not only maybe hallucinate, of course, I wasn't awake long enough to hallucinate, well, I but know, I thought I was, levels. yeah. But I wasn't reasoning things because I was so tired. Right. But everybody pushes themselves, thinking I can. Right. Do now, this if or I do had that. had, if I had had a good night's sleep, and whether it was the middle of the night or not, and of course, you know, there was a speed limit on this bridge, so I was going slow enough that I could have looked at that and thought, "Wow, what a great statue!" Because it was very, very lifelike. <laughs> yeah, but what if it made but you freak? While, but what if it, it made real. somebody else freak out because they hadn't been sleeping like you did, and then they swerve and go flying off the bridge? Probably not a good place to put and a bear. That was a possibility too. I could have had an accident when I saw this because it startled me. I mean, it startled me because I couldn't figure out what in the world a bear was doing in the middle of Kansas. Did it have a hat or a, ba- a picnic basket? No, it was just a bear standing up on its hind legs, but it was a carving on the bridge. Smokey the bear. That's all it was, was just a statue. I know. Well, sometimes they have And why would they put a bear on, a, a bear statue on a bridge in the middle of Kansas anyway? They don't have any bears. Maybe somebody just put it there themselves, you know, hijacked it from somewhere else and it dropped it there, you know? Who knows? I don't know. I have to, I'd have to go drive by the bridge. Maybe 
You just but, hallucinated the bear. Yeah, but but like you know, but my point is that if you go without sleep long enough, you're going to to lose your power to reason or to perceive things as they are, and you are going to hallucinate. I I honestly and completely believe that. Right. So I mean, I believe that this story could have happened. And they could have went nuts because you can go nuts after a prolonged state of not sleeping. I mean, it's been talked about for a long time in science, scientific stuff and all that stuff. So it's possible this happened. It's possible they could have said those crazy things, you know. Even, did it mean anything? I don't know. But I, don't, I can't foresee somebody living after they've basically dis- disemboweled themselves. I can't see the point in depriving people from sleep unless they were studying sleep deprivation that's what they were studying that but not just that but maybe they wanted to but see how long went overboard but how it. long they want to see maybe they were told let's see how long our soldiers can fight doing this when they're in certain type of gas environments or this or that or whatever you know what i mean who knows really right. knows but when they start experimenting on prisoners you know that's not going to be good governments are always a you know, experimenting well, on people. I mean, that's not, that's no urban, that's that. no urban legend, but could this possibly happen? Yeah, I believe so. And could they have acted crazy like that? Yeah, because it can totally happen when you have not sleep. I mean, just look at people who are on drugs that stay up for days and days and days. I mean, they start getting paranoid and hallucinating, seeing things and, you know, aren't making sense. So it's crazy. That's true. It's one of those things. So. Well, you're right. It is, it, it's plausible. It just kind of makes me wonder how stories like that get started. Well, that one's a creepy one. I mean, you can go and yeah, read it. Yeah, that one's very they, creepy. They can go and read it, and it'll probably be it'll sound better. You know, I know I kind of screwed up on reading it, but, I mean, it's called the Russian Sleep Experiment. I mean, they have creepy things on it on YouTube where you can watch a video thingy about it. People have pictures of it trying to say, hey, it's proof. Here's a picture of these people, you know. So, I go ahead, look up ur- Urban Legends, look up that, check it out yourself. So Pictures can be Photoshopped. Okay, the green yeah, of man. Of course they know that. I'm just saying that people <laughs> went out of their know. way to do that, you know? The green man. The green man. This is from Coppo, Pennsylvania. It became common to see this horribly disfigured man walking the streets at night. And people called him Charlie No Face or the green man. And when he was spotted, he seemed to disappear quickly. It just, you know, you blink, it, the guy was gone. And those that tried to find him had no luck. They'd look all around for this guy. They couldn't find him. And everybody in this town, just about everybody, had their own stories about encounters with him, everything from a quick glance to the sight of him making babies cry. Well, this particular story can be traced back to a 100% real person. Uh, the man's name was Raymond Robinson and he was born in 1910 and when he was eight years old he was trying to look at a bird's nest on the Murado Bridge when there was a terrible accident he touched a power line that electrocuted him causing horrible facial injuries that never properly healed so because of his appearance because his appearance tended to cause panic among the people around there, he spent most of his 74 years hiding out in his home with his family, and he only came out at night. He would, so he would walk the streets at night when uh, there were hardly any people around, so they were less likely to see him, but unfortunately, this didn't always work all the time and he became an urban legend in Coppell, Pennsylvania. Uh, Some people used to drive around all night long hoping to catch a glimpse of him. But those that did, they said that they would turn around and he'd be gone. Well, he knew, apparently he knew that these people were either going to make fun of him or he was afraid of him, of them. Right. But this urban legend just happens to be true. Aww. And um, he was just looking at bird nests. Yeah, when he was eight years old, he was climbing a bridge to look at a bird's nest, and apparently there was electricity connected somehow to this bridge for some reason or other. Mm-hmm. And when he touched it, it electrocuted him, and it caused 
really, really horrible facial injuries. But you know what? That uh, you know, you touch electricity, it's going to burn you from the inside out because yeah. it's going to go into you at one point and it's going to come out at and at another point. And I kind of got the feeling that maybe this may have come out in his face. Well, it could come out anywhere, but it probably it could it was, come but out if anywhere. he was close enough to like the main source of it, I could see how that could be very horrific. I mean, it happens. I mean, people who go up in the I actually, when I was reading this story, I actually felt really, really bad for this guy. Even though, you know, he died, like, um, in, um... It don't matter when he died. It's a sad 1984, thing. 1984, I think it was. Can you imagine, though, um... Being deformed. How much Your whole ridicule mm-hmm. and embarrassment and how this guy could have felt from these townspeople yeah it's sad i mean that's how society is people are cruel and mean and they're always attacking picking and bullying on people no matter what and that's why people have insecurities and fears all the time even the people who have nothing wrong with them you know are freaking about themselves and this guy you know as a kid you know had this horrible uh tragic thing that happened to him and then having to live the rest of his life like this and you're saying that people are screaming and fleeing from him that's just insane i know it's like they never took the time to find out just exactly what kind of a person he is i mean we get we have a guy in town that walks around and his face was burnt in a car accident and this guy looks horrible i mean well don't say that but i mean it's it's well not anymore he doesn't but you know i mean he has no nose his lips were burned off his eyelids were burned off and his face is just nothing but scars this guy was burned over 70 percent of his body from the top of his head down i see him every once in a while when i'm in town and i stop and talk to him and when i talk to this guy i look him right in the eye and it's you don't have to stare at people that are disfigured you can stand there and look them right in the eye and speak to these people because they have beautiful souls well not just that i mean not everybody and, has a beautiful soul but well some not people everybody do, does but yeah. i mean they are human just like you and i right and everybody has fears and insecurities and issues so that's why people need to stop treating people like you're there's something wrong with them just because they don't look the way that you think is beautiful you know, that's what's wrong with society. I mean, everybody's just hateful and judgmental, you know, and it's cruel. I know. That's it, exactly. People are judgmental. And this uh, Raymond guy in Coppell, Pennsylvania, I, you can only imagine the type, the kind of life that this man, I mean, he lived 74 years, you know. 74 years is a lot of years for people to be chasing you down to get a glimpse of you or to, to hold their babies up so your looks makes that baby cry it, it it's just it horrible yeah i know it's just horrible but and that's an ur- they try to say that's an urban legend but yet you're saying it's not an urban legend it's actually this is not an urban it, it the man is an urban was an urban legend in Coppell, pennsylvania for years and years and years and uh but, but it's not but the thing about this particular fake. urban legend it's 100 percent true right it's not fake it's true and it happened to this guy and not only did it suck to have that happen to you he just was tormented and tortured his, the rest right. of his existence that's the word i wanted he was tormented i mean that's just, what people do they make fun of people even if you don't look like 100 percent, or they don't think you match what said person should look like as this or that you know and that's just it's sad whatever that one's we, kind of a bummer <laughs> that one is a bummer but yeah. i included it because it's some a big urban one out there, yeah my point to this particular story is some urban legends do turn out to be true right um we were talking earlier about urban legends that parents tell their kids mm-hmm. i'm going to tell you an urban legend that my dad used to tell me all the time okay um I won't, and I know just about everyone has heard this urban legend. A woman went to a gas station at night, and um, she, the, it was uh, the one of those where the attendant came out and put the gas in your car. So this is an old urban legend. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, she um, she pulled up, told the attendant to put. Uh, uh, $10 whatever in her car uh, worth of gas in her car and he's standing there and he's staring at her and he's staring in the window to her car and he would stare at her 
Well, after he put the gas in the car, she handed him the money, and he said, Ma'am, this is counterfeit. And she didn't want to get out of the car. She was afraid to because she thought that he had ulterior motives. So anyway, he finally talked her, and he says, We need to talk about this in the station. So he finally convinced her to get out of the car. They walked into the station, and he told the woman, Your money's not counterfeit. There's a man hiding in your back seat. My dad told me this urban legend and this is one that is very very common and when I started driving my dad used to tell me now when you get before you get in your car you check in you check your back seat down on the floor he says when you go anywhere and you get out of your car when you come back and get back in your car you check that back seat I did that for years I was in my 20s still doing that you probably still do it, and uh, wait, I, so, I still do and it. And it's a good to thing. To this day, I still do it. It's a good thing to do. I mean, I've heard that, and I've done it. But I also, you know, when you're walking at night to your car, I also keep the keys in between my fingers so you can use it as a weapon. You know what I mean? Between your right. uh, first two fingers, you got it out like it's a little sticker, so you can stick somebody if you need to. So when you're walking out in the dark towards your car or whatever, you have a little protection. Then you, you know, you quickly lift the handle so the light pops on, so you can look in the front or the back and then you open up the car and you go in you know what I mean but there's people who leave their car running and run off and you know mm-hmm. go into the store and come back they don't even look and then there's some creeper in the back seat I'm sure that's happened to some to somebody at some point you know I um well or the escape convict down the road got into the car I, I, you know? I drive I drive a small Nissan Frontier and it's a crew cab and what well, that it's not is that small but yeah well, it's not that small, but it, it's a crew cab, right. and for those of you that don't know what a crew cab is, that's a truck with four doors. So my truck has a back seat. Okay, when I get out of my truck, I push the little button and listen to the beep or the horn honk, so it's locked. Yeah. When, when she does it three well, times. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, it's I done. do, actually. I, then she's in sure the house to make sure it's locked yeah, again. to make sure it's locked, I'll stand there and I'll push it, and OCD. the horn will beep. You know, and I'll push it again. I usually do that about three or four times just to make sure it's locked because I'm compulsive. And my, But this truck has an alarm on it. And if you try to get in this truck with anything except that little mechanism to unlock the door or the key, a, a security alarm goes off. And let me tell you, it's loud because I accidentally set it off more than once. But even with this get up on my car, this alarm system and everything on my truck, I still check the back seat to this day. Well, yeah, you got that little fear. Well, and like uh, Holly mentioned, that's also that story where the guy was following behind that the girl in the other car, and he kept flashing his brights behind her, you know, and he'd keep flashing it every time the guy in the back seat kept popping up, you know, to save her life. And she thought the guy in the other car was chasing her and stalking and harassing her, and she's driving faster, right. and he's driving faster, and she's starting to be reckless. He's starting to be reckless, and he's flashing his lights, and everything else and they finally get to a gas station she runs in and he runs in and she's like telling the gas guy help me help me and then he's like there's somebody you know call the cops there's someone in the back seat of your car and then it turns out it was escape prisoner or escape crazy mm-hmm. guy from the mental there are several variations war. of, this, of yeah. this particular urban legend right but it makes but you wonder if if at one point this did happen to somebody I mean it seems no, possible that, that is something that is entirely plausible Hmm. Somebody could be hiding in your back seat. How how many people Big bird. a day just hop in their cars and take off? Everybody. You know, <laughs> everybody but me. I check the back seat. And uh, it, to this day, and my dad told me this legend back when I was 15 years old. You know? So uh, it's <laughs> it's just, it, it, it's it, it's as plausible as it can be. But it's funny how something like that can stay in your head all these years. And with today's cars, with the brand new cars today, you wouldn't think it was possible. But not every car is set up with the alarm system or any kind of alarm system at all, let alone the one that I have. And I'm lucky because the one on my truck was standard issue. But it's, you know, you just, you use your little controller there, you know, you lock your cars you hear the beep oh it's locked you know i mean after a while you start getting complacent and you don't pay attention to what's going you know to to something like that and something as silly as that and some people would think it's silly uh, you you know it it could save your life it's true but 
nowadays you think about all these computerized stuff where somebody can make a, a type of device where they can hijack your car because everything starts up with a computer. You don't even need a key mm-hmm. anymore. And they can control your car, shut your car off, do whatever they want with it, you know, so. My sister has a deal on her car and she only uses it in the wintertime, you know, but she could stand at the door and push a button and her car starts up. And, and so she'll let it warm up before she goes out and gets in it. But when she gets in it, she has to use a key to get in it. I mean, it doesn't unlock the door. It just starts up the car. Yeah. Uh, I think my sister's car is like that. You know, unfortunately, mine is not like that. My Mine's not like that either. I mean, I have to actually turn a key to get mine started. Right. I mean, I used to have a better car than what I do now. But, hey, it gets me from point A to point B. So that's all that matters. And it's got heat and air conditioning. So woohoo for exactly. me. Exactly. I got one, so this one's from Oklahoma, all right? You ready? Yeah. Uh, or wait, were you still talking about the... No. The gas station one? Okay. No, I'm done with it. All right, so one dark, windy night, the town drunk was, you know, making his way home after the bar closed, weaving, and well, you know how drunks are when they're, like, wasted. And yeah. somehow he got turned around and ended up walking through the churchyard instead of taking the road home. Well, the wind picked up, and he thought he could hear a voice calling his name. Well, suddenly, the ground opened up in front of him, and he fell down down into, like, this open grave. And he could hear the voice clearer now. Now, this thing kept calling to him, and he knew it was the devil. I mean, he was convinced it was the devil, and it was coming for him just like the preacher said on account of him being the town drunk. Well, the hole was very deep, and inside it was, like, pitch black because it's nighttime, you know? And his eyes were, you know, kind of adjusting to the darkness. And after a few minutes, he made out a form sitting in the darkness with him in this hole. And he called, it called his name. And he scrambled away and, you know, as back as could as he can to the edge of the hole away from this thing and tried to climb out of as best as he could. Then the figure spoke and it said, you can't get out. And the drunk gave a shout of pure terror and leaped straight up more than six feet, and he caught the edge of the hole in his hands and scrambled out and ran for home as fast as he could. Well, inside the open grave was his neighbor Charlie. He sighed, because basically he fell in the hole a few minutes before his friend, and he thought that together they might be able to help each other to climb out, but it turns out that uh, he had to wait till the next morning to have somebody else help him out. That's another legend that goes around. That's... <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that one. It's funny. You know, this poor... Yeah, it is. The, the, one of the other drunks crows at home, falls into open grave, and he's stuck there. He's been trying to climb out for, like, ever, right? And then the right. top, t- you know, drunk's finally coming home because the bars are closed, and he ends up stumbling through the graveyard and falls in, and this thing is calling his name and hollering for him, and he can't see, and he's freaking out. He had enough, you know... Uh, uh, adrenaline and flew out of the hole and got out of there and the poor dude his neighbor is still stuck in the hole and had to wait till morning till you know the mortician or the whoever comes by for the hole can to you help imagine have to sit in a grave all night long no but i thought it was kind of funny but it was on the it urban funny. it was on the urban legend one so i'm like you know what that's hilarious because i can see that actually happening you know <laughs> But it's an urban legend that they say that happens in a lot of different towns. You know, the poor stupid drunks fell into the open pit and it turns out it was his friend, not a devil or a demon, but, you know, his other buddy who was drinking earlier fell in the hole first, you know? So that one's possible. <laughs> that is funny. Problem is, that one's plausible too. <laughs> I know. I know, but who goes walking through a cemetery drunk at night? Well, what if their house is on the other side? Why walk down the streets? Why not take a shortcut? Well, I've cut through a cemetery more than once. They don't bother me. Not with your I've car, I've never fallen I into an open grave because around here, when they dig a grave, the day before a funeral, they put plywood over it so nobody falls into it. <laughs> hey, it happens. I'm sure this it has happens. happened at I'm, some point. Uh, you know what? I have a feeling that somewhere, at some time, that actually happened to somebody. It's it's even funnier that his friend was in the hole first, and he's like, hey, help me, and the dude's like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, so I had to throw one in. Hey, so it beats, you know, for the sad sad one you told, and then we had to throw in a little comedian one. Come, you know. So. Well, I got one. Mm-hmm. I just found it. All right. 
by her way. And yes, people, I'm looking at urban legends right now. The Susskind Screamer. Disclaimer. It says, is there anything creepier than a dead bride? Apparently not, because stories of these tragic ladies crop up all over the world. On Susquehanna Road in Pennsylvania, under what used to be called Susquehanna Railroad Bridge, yet another of these legends has taken hold. According to many locals, if you drive onto the bridge, turn off your car, put the keys on the roof, and wait, you'll be able to see the Susquehanna the Susquehanna Screamer in your rearview mirror. I got tongue-tied there for a second. Most stories agree that she is the ghost of a woman who hung herself on the bridge after being dumped at the altar. She was supposed to have had screamed loudly as she jumped to her death. Yeah. Well, for one thing, I'm not going to stop on a bridge in the middle of the night and put my car keys on top of my car. That's when the... That's like one of the. That's just stupid. Cause what if you lose your keys? Then you're... I know. Uh, what if What if you see this thing? Let's just suppose you stop on the bridge, you turn off your engine, turn your lights off, and put your keys on your roof. Okay. Then the then. What the, are you going to do if you see this thing? Right. Then the robber is out there and steals your keys. And yeah, you're going to panic. You're going to try to find your keys, and you take a chance of knocking them off the car and off the bridge for one thing. For another thing, I don't turn my car off. And if I do, my hand stays on that key because it don't come out of the ignition. But what does putting your keys on top of the of, uh, on, on the roof of your car have to do with seeing a ghost? That, that, that's the part of that story that really yeah. makes me question it. But it also says that in the same area, there are other urban legends, including a creature that had webbed feet with long claws and a huge head, and apparently Bigfoot encounters are very common in that region. Well, the Mothman so. and all that stuff, that's all urban legends and stuff, but like a bunch, of, we're just, you know, total, a variety of them tonight, you know, and like we said, we're just kind of trying to pick a Halloween-ish type things to kind of go with the... Right the vibes or whatever so and this has to be in northern pennsylvania where you know up in those hills or something because susquehanna was mentioned and i think that's kind of toward the the northern part of pennsylvania hmm. well you know what we're getting close to the end of our show yes we are so maybe if you want to talk about next week's show and see i want to thank everybody for coming in tonight i want to thank our mods and I want to thank Raven for a good show. Join us uh, next week, October 21st, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. We will be discussing the Green Children of Woolpit, Mary King's Clothes, and more. And we also invite our listeners to call, um, to share us on um, Facebook. Right. I got away with you. I almost screwed that whole ending up. I can't believe it. Well, we're still on, but... I escaped without you wishing me a happy birthday, too. So Happy birthday, Raven. That's right, everybody. Friday is Raven's birthday. Don't mm. forget to wish her a happy birthday. Or send me presents. Well, she doesn't want presents. Just send her money. Eh, eh, whatever. Or just, you know, come and check out her next show. I want to thank everybody for popping in and, you know, sticking with us, even when we had little issues here and there. And like I said, you know subscribe to us on youtube and share us on facebook or you know come find our new page we have a new facebook page anything but um, ordinary with raven it's anything spooky. but ordinary with spooky and raven right you can find it if richard would be so kind to drop the link in chat well and they'll you know it's easy you can guys come check it out on our website as well but thank you everybody and we will see you next week and share us on facebook well we'll talk to you next week well whatever <laughs> maybe night, they, maybe everyone. they will be able to see us, but who knows? All right, good night. Who knows? Good night. <laughs>